Hi folks, uh, let's install some control linkages and there are a couple of things that uh, we need to observe, some tricks if you will, that I would like to show you. Firstly, we have to make sure that these arms are exactly at a 90 degree angle when the server is in the zero position and obviously for that we have to switch it on. I've already created a new model and server 1, the left server, is on channel 2. Okay, I've switched it on, there it goes. And I don't know if you knew this, and if not, maybe that's a first trick, but the server designers designed these control horns in such a way that if you take them off and rotate them roughly 90 degrees and do this a couple of times, then you end up finding one position where it is at exactly 90 degrees without changing the transmitter settings. Okay, now this is the arm that we need, which means those three we can remove. The way I do it is I take it off like this. Now I remember that the one I'm holding is the one I'm using and the other ones I can cut off. Okay, I've cut them off and I've also sanded it down a little bit. You don't really have to do this, it's really cosmetics. I just like it, it looks better. Okay, the next step would be to install these extensions and here we have the bolt. There's already a little bit of Loctite on there, very nice, uh, f from the factory. And now we have to see if this hole fits and then if this little hole fits as well for the little screw. Now the big goal with all the linkages is we want to avoid play at all cost. And that's why I'm going to measure this bolt here. And I'm reading 2.85, 2.85 mil. So I will drill 2.8 and that would, should give it a real tight fit. So now you see that the bolt cuts itself almost a little thread, not really much, but it's a very tight fit. And that's exactly what we want. It's a very precise airplane, but it's only precise if you have absolutely no play in all the linkages. Now, before we install this extension, let's install the ball linkage. It's just easier to do it beforehand. So I have the ball linkage here. Here is the bolt and the screw for attachment to the servo. And now here is the linkage with a little bolt. And you can see I haven't drilled um, the hole there. And it is a very tight fit. And that's exactly what we want. There. Now I'm using soft, uh, weak Loctite again. It doesn't have to be very strong. And now apply the bolt and just tighten it. By the way, if you don't own one of those pliers, this is my absolute favorite tool. It's wonderful, using it all the time. Okay, a little bit of light Loctite also on that bolt. And then f to tighten the bolts, I take the receiver off so I don't put unnecessary strains onto the servo. Let's test fit the carbon rod now and for this I will turn the receiver on again to get the exact measurement. After all I need the zero position of the servo now. So I'm sticking the rod in one side and then I can move the aileron a little bit, stick it into the other side and let's see. And it looks like I don't have to shorten the rod, it fits in nicely. I can glue it in like that. And now I want to prepare the rod a little bit, not too much. We don't want to weaken the rod, but just some little grooves here and there for the epoxy to take a good grip. The next trick is to secure the aileron in a zero position. And I just use a, a clamp like that. Oh, look at this. There is a little friend, a little spider that's watching us. By the way, here in Germany, unlike Australia, spiders are positively non-poisonous. So, okay, here the clamp and now I'm going to take the servo off again once I have the neutral position of the aileron. Take the servo uh, off the receiver so I can move the servo freely. Okay, let's prepare some epoxy and for this important linkage I will do it very exactly with a fine scale. Okay, uh, let's start, but before we do this, I'm going to protect 
the surface of the wing with a bit of paper here. And now we can apply some epoxy. Since I've taken the servo off the receiver, I can move it now. Like so. Now, don't forget to turn the receiver on again and to transmit a first and then the receiver on again because we want to have the zero position of that servo. Let's see if it is actually on with a little movement there, very little, just to check that it's on, fine. Now the next trick is I'm going to take some epoxy and wipe it all over the carbon rod. Why do I do that? Well, this carbon rod, when it's completely dry, it's quite brittle, isn't it? You can even see the hairs of the fibers. And then, if not in flight, then maybe when you transport it or when you bump against something, it can break easily. So, this epoxy serves as a protective cover, if you will. And here's another trick that I'm using. I'm going to use Tixotropic agent again now with the rest of the epoxy that I still have. See, just a little bit and mix it. And you can see now it doesn't run all that much anymore. But why am I using a Tixotropic agent here? See, these rods, they have been fitted with the liquid epoxy and the epoxy has distributed nicely inside the clevises and the carbon rod. But on the outside, I want to reinforce it now. And if I use the pure epoxy, especially in this heat here in Germany, we have a heat wave, then it would be running down all the time and I would have to pick it up again and run down, pick up. So the Tixotropic agent uh, will make it less runny and I have less work. So I figure without Tixotropic agent, it would be quite tedious. Uh, but maybe you know a different trick. So if you do know a different trick, just in the comments, uh, Tell me, I'm curious, I want to learn. Now we can turn the radio off again because there won't be much change now. When you do, just make sure that your system doesn't move the servo while you're taking it off. That's important. With the rudder and elevator, I have used the same technique. The only difference was that this rod here, the bigger rod, you have to make a little thinner so it fits into the clevis and I've just sanded it down. That's no big deal. Here I'm using a different trick, um, and I could have done it with the ailerons before, I just forgot or didn't think of it. See, I have epoxy here already with Tixotropic agent, and now I use heat shrink, a small tube and a larger tube. And I push the small tube almost to the clevis, not quite, and then the bigger tube over it, like so. And then when you shrink it, obviously you have to be very careful not to damage the covering. I use these uh, paper towels for protection. And then with short bursts uh, from the heat gun, I shrink the tubes. And this way we have created a very strong and neat connection. And because I have used this little heat shrink and left a little bit of a gap, in that gap, the epoxy can form a support. Obviously, I have secured the rudder and elevator in the neutral position again with clamps, and the transmitter and receiver are on. So far, the building process, the only thing that's missing is the canopy, and that will be a video 11. In video 10, though, I show you the weight and balance, and there is a special on weights and measurements, and then we can go flying. So as always, subscribe to my channel, please, and check out the other videos, and please give me feedback. See you later. Bye.